When was the last time someone made your day? Maybe it was your mom when she cooked your very favorite dinner. Or your art teacher when she liked your painting so much she hung it on her wall. It could have been your best friend who invited you along to the jump park on a rainy day. Maybe it was your little sister when she shared the last cookie with you. Or your neighbor who let you play with his adorable puppy all afternoon. It's an amazing feeling when someone does something just for you. Their thoughtful gift says, you matter. I'm glad you're part of this world. When you remember how someone's made your day, then you can turn the tables. You can do the same for someone else and make their day, even if you don't think you've got much to give. After all, you've got your smile, your words. I really love the story you wrote. You are super creative. You've got your time and attention. You just moved here, right? You wanna to come to my birthday party? Every single day is full of brand new opportunities to share what you've been given, starting with God's love. When you choose to make someone's day by giving that love away, others can see God at work in you. That's why generosity is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Story Lab. This week, we're taking a look at the source of every single good gift. Who's this from? Hmm. The plot thickens. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. This month, we're talking about how God's generosity gives us a reason to give to others. So what's up with the giant special delivery box? I don't know. It was on the doorstep when I came. And check this out. 
to Skylar and Sebastian. Uh, who's it from? Not a clue. Oh, I love surprises. Open, open, open. Hmm. There's a note. Ahem. <clears throat> The festive season has just begun, so now it's time to make something fun. A surprise challenge! Got sticks, sticks. leaves, flowers. Flowers. Ooh, it smells good. Uh, oh. Ooh, seashells. Another flower. Oh, wait, can we eat these? Wait, I need something. Why are they called nutcrackers if you can't crack nuts with them? We're supposed to make something with all this stuff, not eat it. I... Well, what else is in here? Ooh, I know what to do with these. Is it fun? Oh yeah. Let's make it. Today, we're going to turn fire green. What? I am so in. We need these pine cones and a couple of other things. Isopropyl alcohol also known as rubbing alcohol, copper sulfate, a bowl, a lighter, gloves, and I think that's about it. Okay, put one pine cone in a bowl. Step one, pour the isopropyl alcohol over the top of the pine cone. Aha, alcohol is flammable. Which means it can catch on fire and burn easily. Step two, sprinkle the copper sulfate over the pine cone. This is going to give us the green glow we're looking for. And step three, pour just a little more isopropyl alcohol for good measure. Step four. Outside. Good idea. Three, two, two one. one. So cool. Kind of mesmerizing. When the copper is heated, the electrons absorb heat energy. After a time, these lose the extra energy, releasing it in the form of green light. Different elements make different colors too. We could add sodium for yellow and sulfur for blue. Who knew the humble pine cone could do so much? You can even eat them. Really? You wanna boil it first or just eat the seeds. Huh. Pine cones, the gift that keeps on giving. Which reminds me, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the book of James. James was written by, you guessed it, James. But this James just happened to be Jesus' half-brother. James didn't follow Jesus at first. But after Jesus returned to life, James believed in him. And you know if Jesus' own brother believed, it's real. James became a leader of the early church in Jerusalem. He wrote this letter to the Jewish believers to help them understand it's not only important to have faith, but to put that faith into action. It all begins with understanding just how much God has given us. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. James wrote just one small book of the Bible, and it is packed with short, punchy statements that are basically mic drop moments. Today's verse is no exception. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Mic drop, there it is. In fact, I bet we can memorize this right now. So say it with me. Every good and perfect gift is from God. One more time. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Great! Now that's locked in your brain, let's unpack what it means. See, whatever is good in your life, from the tiniest thing to the most amazing thing, comes from God. Imagine that all the good things you have are wrapped up in a box. It's easy to look at someone else and feel like they have more than you 
But the truth is, you will always have less than some people and more than others. The important thing is to stay focused on what God has given you. And God's most amazing gifts to you are not ones that you can rip off the paper to open up. First of all, God has given you life. And every single breath you take, God is literally holding you together. God's given you people to love you and care for you. And God made everything we have to eat too. And there's so much more. God created this incredible world for you to live in. Beautiful forests, rushing rivers, and sky forever. All kinds of creatures from adorable to awe-inspiring. There's no end to what gifts we can discover in God's incredible creation. Next up, no matter who you are or where you live, God also promises the gift of help. When you are in trouble and you don't know what to do, God's help is always there for you. God might give you wisdom through the words of scripture or guidance as you talk with a trusted adult. You may simply have a strong feeling that God is with you, even if what's happening around you doesn't change right away. And then there's the biggest good gift of all time, the gift that we celebrate every Christmas, the gift we celebrate every Easter, the gift of God's very own Son, Jesus. No matter who you are, where you are, or what you've done, Jesus is for you. When we follow Jesus, our relationship with God is restored. And we can know that no matter what's happening now, God will make everything right in the end. As James wrote, every good and perfect gift is from God. Everything from this amazing world to help and guidance to your actual life comes from God. And when you remember that, you can look forward to opening those gifts in new ways every single day. The end. So I know all the good stuff in my life is from God, but it's really easy to forget. Yeah. I get stuck on thinking about what I don't have rather than what I do have. Well, we all need a wake-up call sometimes. So, what's, what's our part in the story? It's our job to remember and pay attention to all the amazing things that our generous God has given to us. You can start out your day asking, God, help me see all your gifts. Once we remember to look, those gifts are everywhere. That awesome sunrise you get to see on the way to school. When your teacher sees you're struggling and gives you some help. Ooh, pizza on the lunch menu. Your kitten chasing its tail. A sense of peace and calm when you sit down to take your math test. Every single one of those things and a million more. They're all reminders of God's generosity. Generosity is making someone's day by giving something away. And the more you start to see God's generosity to you, the more you can begin to share those good gifts with the people around you. That sounds like a win-win to me. Absolutely. It's been a gift to hang out with all of you. See you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. God gives us good things. Like friends and food. Air to breathe. Oh, and all the stuff in our special delivery box. All gifts from God. You mean God left the box? I think someone else helped. <sighs> this gift has got me pining for the outdoors. Ah, ah. Want to make something else? Naturally. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. I wish I was surfing on one of those waves right now. Boop.